and welcome back to our side our side I'm getting ready to make mango mousse and I'm using this can of evaporated milk I have to first take the label off and boil the can um, for about 10 minutes it says this is the first time I'm making this recipe it's my aunt's recipe and it's several decades old but um, I never got around to making it before mainly because boiling this can of evaporated milk makes me nervous but I'm gonna give it a try today um, so when you place it, you could place it this way, but make sure that the water level covers the can completely. Uh, the, the can of milk has to be completely submerged. Um, that's very important to know. So I'm going to top it up with a little more water now. The recipe says to bring the water to a boil and then boil it further 10 minutes. But I'm not going to do that. Once the water comes to a rolling boil, I'm going to turn off the heat and let the can of evaporated milk just sit in the hot water for about 10 minutes. So this is the time that I turn off the heat. So if you boil it for too long, the can will explode because the pressure is building inside the can. Um, set a timer if you feel that you're going to be distracted with something else or just be around close near the fire so that you know you can turn it off on time so now um, I'm gonna just let the bubble settle in this and that'll take about five to ten minutes then carefully take out the can from the saucepan drain off the water first and then leave the can to completely cool chill the can in the fridge don't open it chill it in the fridge overnight or leave it for about four hours in the freezer so it's been about four hours since I put the evaporated milk in the freezer. It's chilled and ready to go. I'm ready to make my mango mousse. Now I am using only half the quantities in the recipe. So this is basically just how it's done. The original recipe is put up on this video for you if you want to make a larger quantity. So mixing hot water and gelatin. I'm using a whisk to just break up the lumps so that we'll get a smoother gel here. And then set it aside. We'll be using it in just a little bit. Before using the evaporated milk, shake the can really well. The good thing about this recipe is that you don't have to follow very strictly the quantities on the ingredients list. As long as you adjust the quantity of gelatin to the quantity of evaporated milk and the mango that you're using. Because gelatin is the thing that's going to set your mousse. If you add too little gelatin, then your mousse is not going to set. And if you add too much gelatin, the mousse will not feel like a mousse. So whisk the evaporated milk until it's nice and frothy. And that just takes a few seconds. You can see now it's really nice and frothy. From this point forward, I'm going to be adding the mango and the sugar gradually while whisking. Since the mango pulp already has sugar in it, just go easy on the granulated sugar at this point. Once you've mixed in all the mango pulp, you could taste the mixture and see if it needs to be sweetened a little more to your liking. And then you can add however much sugar that you want to bring it to that level of sweetness that you like. Now you can use any mango pulp that you like, but the recipe says to use the Alfonso mango pulp and for good reason. I feel like the Alfonso mango is sweeter and less sour than this uh, Kesar mango pulp that I'm using now. And just to clear any doubts, if you're planning to puree fresh mango and add it into this, I don't know if it will work. I have not tried it. Um, usually for whipped desserts like this, you would need to stew the fruit and then puree it. Um, but it's worth a try. So I'm adding the gelatin now and you see how smooth and glossy it became. So just incorporate it for a few seconds, just whisk it like this and then add some vanilla however much you want. If you want a stronger vanilla taste just add a little extra. But a cap full just worked for me for this quantity. I tasted the mixture and I feel it needs a little bit more sweetness. So I'm adding one teaspoon more of sugar and mix it until the sugar dissolves. And I pour the mixture into a bowl and then leave it covered in the refrigerator until it sets. You can garnish the mousse any way you like with fresh mango, with whipped cream. And I'm going to do some whipped cream because I just have some extra whipped cream that I need to use up. So I'm sweetening it with a 
just a little bit of sugar that's about a teaspoon of sugar and um, a little vanilla and then whisk until it's fairly stiff but not too stiff if you're using powdered sugar instead of granulated sugar to sweeten your whipped cream um, add it now like at this stage when it's kind of thick like this and then whip for another few seconds longer but don't whip it for too long that it is too stiff and buttery you just want it to be nicer and soft now the whipped cream is ready to use so I made another batch and I put it in these little glasses now you can see um, it's a little bit jiggly it's still setting but I just wanted to finish this video so I'm gonna go ahead and garnish it and decorate it so here's the whipped cream in the previous cup I have already put the mango on top of the mousse and I layered it with the whipped cream and another uh, bit of mango on the top so you can play around and come up with your own uh, way to decorate your mango mousse and make it look presentable and this is how mango mousse was made back in the day in Sri Lanka. I hope you will try this recipe out. It's really worth it. And um, you could feed a crowd. The uh, ingredients are flexible and it's very budget friendly. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share and subscribe to Asai Rasai. Thanks for watching.